Welcome to the deep dive, everybody. Today, we're going deep, diving into a topic a lot of you have requested, the opioid crisis. And you specifically wanted to use the Netflix show Painkiller as a jumping off point. Yeah, it's a smart move, you know, using pop culture to make a complicated topic more approachable. But as good as that show is, it's just a starting point, right? We, we got to look beyond the drama at the stuff that fueled this whole crisis in the real world. Totally. It's like the show grabs you with the story, but it left me with so many questions like, how much of this actually happened? What led us to this point? I'm really glad you're here to help me cut through the noise, figure out what's real, what's dramatized. So where do we even start with something this big? Well, we've got some great guides for this deep dive. I mean, we're talking about digging into Painkiller by Barry Meyer, and then there's Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe, two books that are basically the gold standard when it comes to understanding this crisis. Right, so like our roadmap, those are the big ones. Exactly. And you know what else is cool? Netflix has an article on their Tudum thing called Get This. Is Painkiller a True Story? It leans heavily on Meyer and Keefe's work, so it's perfect for us. Oh, nice. So it's like we've got these experts showing us around this complicated world. Precisely. Like any good guide, they point out the important stuff, the moments that really shaped things. For example, that Netflix article, it talks about how Barry Meyer, a reporter for The New York Times, was one of the first people to really blow the whistle on OxyContin. Oh. Yeah. Back in the early 2000s, he started noticing this weird trend what Purdue Pharma, the company that makes OxyContin, was claiming about the drug and what was actually happening. Those two things weren't adding up. Hold on. You're saying Purdue, the ones behind OxyContin, yeah. weren't being straight up about their own product? Not exactly. See, Meyer was getting these tips from like healthcare workers who were seeing the damage firsthand, people getting addicted, overdoses, all of it. The warning signs are flashing, but Purdue was busy selling OxyContin as some kind of miracle cure for everything. So it sounds like they were more focused on making money than on whether their drug was actually helping people. That's the big question at the heart of this whole thing. And honestly, I'll give them credit. Painkiller does try to address that. Yeah, every episode starts with that based on real events mm. reminder, which is kind of haunting when you think about it. It definitely reminds you that this isn't some made up problem. It's real people's lives. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But there's another thing the show does well. It shows how big this problem really is. Like, it's not just about individuals getting addicted. It's the whole system that made this happen in the first place. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. That's a key difference between Painkiller and movies like, say, Train Spotting or Requiem for a Dream. Mm -hmm. Those focus on addiction, which is important, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but Painkiller pulls back the curtain on the corporate greed, the way they marketed this stuff and how regulations failed. All of that turned a painkiller into a full-blown crisis, you know? Yeah, and it's way bigger than any one person's struggle because of all that. That actually reminds me of this review I read from the Indian Journal of Medical Ethics. They said, even a show as powerful as Painkiller has limits. Like, it can only tell one story at a time, you know? Yeah. But this crisis, this has been going on for decades. Yeah. So the scale of it is, it's almost impossible to grasp. That is a really powerful insight. And honestly... That's exactly why we're having this conversation, this deep dive, right? To give you that bigger picture. It's like that image also from that review yeah. that stuck with me. Pills scattered around a body in a morgue. Oh, wow. It's meant to be shocking, but it makes you realize how serious this all is. Exactly. And it's not just an image, right? It's backed up by the facts. Right. The Netflix article, it mentions over 40 deaths per day from prescription opioids. Just in 2020 alone. It's mind-boggling. It's a crisis that's still unfolding, you know? Yeah. So last we heard, Barry Meyer, he was uncovering this huge gap between what Purdue was saying about OxyContin and what was actually happening out in the world. They're promising one thing, but the reality is it's wreaking havoc. So what happens next? Did anybody try to stop them? Oh, Meyer, he didn't just uncover it. He called them out. He wrote this book, Painkiller, came out in 2003, and it exposed everything, how Purdue was marketing this drug, the whole playbook. It was a huge wake-up call, showing everyone just how dangerous OxyContin was becoming. 2003, that's years before you usually hear about the opioid crisis hitting its peak. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact did his book have back then? I mean, it sent shockwaves right through the medical world and beyond. Suddenly, it's not just isolated incidents anymore. Meyer showed everyone how Purdue's aggressive marketing was directly linked to all these prescriptions and all the addiction and overdoses that came with it. So it's like Meyer's book was the warning siren, but nobody really wanted to listen. 
Pretty much. I mean, people tried to hold Purdue accountable. In 2007, they actually plead guilty, federal charges even, for misleading people about how addictive OxyContin really was. Wait, hold up. They admit they lied, but things still got worse? How does that even happen? That's where things get even crazier. So they plead guilty, right? But Purdue, they're still making tons of money while this whole opioid crisis explodes. And this is where our other guide comes in, Patrick Radden Keefe, with his book Empire of Pain. He picks up the story in the 2010s and notices something terrifying heroin. It's everywhere, and it's hooking people who've never even touched opioids before. Okay, so how does heroin even enter the picture? It seems like a whole different animal compared to prescription painkillers. That's the thing that makes Keefe's work so important. He connects the dots. This huge surge in heroin use, he traces it right back to, you guessed it, the overprescription of painkillers like OxyContin. You're kidding. Nope. Oxycontin gets harder to get, either because of new regulations or the price goes through the roof. So people who are already hooked, they look for something else, something cheaper, something easier to find, and bam, heroin floods in. Wow. So Purdue creates this huge demand for opioids, finally get called out, and then it backfires and fuels an even bigger problem with a more dangerous drug. That's it's just... just a vicious cycle, and it highlights the law of unintended consequences, right? But Keefe, he doesn't stop there. He digs into the Sackler family, the ones who own Purdue Pharma, and uncovers this ruthless pursuit of profit, even when it's clear people are dying because of their drug. It always seems to come back to money, doesn't it? This is where those comparisons to the Panama Papers, the ones that showed how rich people hide their money, start to make a lot of sense. You got it. This is where our deep dive goes from a national crisis to a global problem. While Purdue's pulling strings to cash in on OxyContin, the Panama Papers are exposing this whole hidden network where the wealthy and powerful, they play by a different set of rules, no accountability. It all comes down to profit, no matter the cost. Hold on a second. We're talking about complicated financial schemes now, right? Yeah. Can you explain how something like the Panama Papers connects back to Purdue and the opioid crisis? I'm not sure I see how it all fits together. You're right. Let's break that down. So the Panama Papers, they showed us how the rich use these things called shell companies. Basically, they're like secret companies existing only on paper to hide their money, dodge taxes, you name it. It's all smoke and mirrors, making their money vanish. And Purdue, were they stashing their profits in these offshore accounts too? We'd need to see their books to know for sure, but there are definitely parallels. Both the Netflix article and that review in the Indian Journal of Medical Ethics, they talk about how Purdue used all these legal loopholes to protect the Sackler family's fortune, all while their company's being slapped with billions in fines and settlements. So they were working the system, just like those people exposed in the Panama Papers, to protect themselves while people were dying because of what they did. Money has twisted our healthcare system, giving corporations way too much power, and how nobody seems to be held accountable when things go wrong. And that lack of accountability, this feeling that some people are above the law while others suffer, it's just infuriating. And it makes you question everything, especially when you think about the role doctors played in prescribing these addictive painkillers. You're hitting on a really crucial point there. That Indian Journal of Medical Ethics Review, they talk about how this whole crisis has just destroyed trust in the medical profession. Doctors who were supposed to be able to trust with our lives, they got caught in Purdue's web, sometimes without even knowing it. Other times, well, let's just say there were incentives to prescribe OxyContin. We've gone from talking about one painkiller to this huge conversation about corporate greed, the influence of money and medicine, and whether we can even trust the people who are supposed to be looking out for our health. It makes you wonder, where do we even go from here? It's a lot to process, isn't it? We started with a Netflix show, and now it feels like we're caught in this web of like corporate greed, a system that's broken, and real people getting hurt because of it. It's overwhelming, absolutely. And you're not alone in feeling that way. But honestly, admitting how complicated this is, how huge this crisis has become, that's the first step to actually fixing it, you know? So where do we even begin to untangle all of this? What can we actually do with all this information we've uncovered? That's the million dollar question. And I think that's why this deep dive is so important. It's not about giving you the answers. It's about giving you the knowledge, the context to start asking the right questions, to demand more from the people who are supposed to protect us. You know what I mean? You've given us a lot to consider. The power of these pharmaceutical companies, how regulations failed, and how we can even trust healthcare anymore. You even brought up those bigger systemic issues. 
like the financial secrecy exposed by the Panama Papers. Are those problems even solvable? They have to be. We can't just sit back and do nothing. Look, the Panama Papers, that whole thing, it showed us that these systems, the ones that are supposed to protect the wealthy and powerful, they can be exposed. It's about shining a light on what's happening, demanding transparency, and holding those in power accountable for their actions. So what does that look like in real life? Like, how can we as individuals even make a dent in something as massive as corporate power in this whole financial secrecy thing? It starts with staying informed, with having conversations like this one. It means supporting investigative journalism, fighting for stricter regulations, and demanding better from our elected officials. And don't underestimate the power of your own choices, from questioning your doctor about prescriptions to supporting businesses that are trying to do things the right way. It's about being more aware, not just of what we buy, but of the information we consume and understanding the systems that control our lives. Exactly. The more we understand these interconnected systems, the better we're able to challenge them, to demand better. This deep dive has been eye-opening. We've gone from the opioid crisis and painkiller to the research of Barry Meyer and Patrick Radden Keefe, and even touched on global issues like financial secrecy. And remember, this is just the beginning. There's a lot more to uncover, like documentaries. There's one, Crime of the Century, that tackles the pharmaceutical industry head on. And there are tons of articles, books, all diving deep into the complexities of this crisis. You've given us the tools. Now it's our turn to keep digging. Thank you so much for guiding us through this incredibly important and honestly, pretty heavy topic. And to you listening, we hope this deep dive is giving you the information you need to learn more, ask those tough questions, and demand better. Keep exploring, keep questioning, keep diving deep.